Here in the middle of the Bering Sea, a tiny spot of land emerges from the water. This is St. Paul Island, Alaska. I've come here with a team of six researchers because this lonely outpost was one of the last stomping grounds of the woolly mammoth. Mammoths remained on St. Paul for thousands of years after they disappeared from the mainland. We've arrived in early spring so that the team can work in the middle of a frozen lake to get the answers they seek from the mud sediments below. They want to know when and why the mammoths went extinct on St. Paul. The team had to wait several days for their gear to arrive because of bad weather, but eventually they were able to get to the lake with their equipment to collect cores of the lake sediment stretching back at least 10,000 years, a continuous record filled with bits of evidence they hope will allow them to peer back in time on this site. Uh, Russ Graham, and I'm the director of the Earth and Mineral Sciences Museum at Penn State University. I'm a vertebrate paleontologist, and I study uh, animals of the Ice Age, and I'm particularly interested in those animals we call proboscideans, which are mammoths and mastodons. Uh, we're here on uh, a lake in a volcano on St. Paul Island. What we are in is, a, is a, an old caldera of a volcano. It's a lake that's filling that in, so it's sort of circular in shape. And this is probably an area where the mammoths would have come down to the lake. Mammoths would have come and gone and wandered around and been able to leave, and so we would probably see them sporadically at the watering hole. But once the uh, island became isolated by the ocean, uh, this area then became one of their primary watering holes, and they pr probably came here daily. And the reason we're at the lake is that the lake provides a continuous record. That is, sediments are always filling the lake every year, year after year after year. And if we could figure out ways to detect whether the mammoths were present, we could then use that to tell us when the mammoths actually went extinct. So my name is Nancy Bigelow. I'm a researcher at the U University of Alaska Fairbanks. I've been in Alaska 25 years. Um, to do the coring, what we do is we take a tube and push it into the mud. We, we collect uh, meter-long cores. So we pull the tube out, push the mud out into a holder, then we go back down the same hole, push again, and this is all done by hand. So this is how you get a nine meter core in nine segments that you then have to glue back together. The strength comes from? Our shoulders. <laughs> no, it's all brute force. Wow. Jack Williams is a paleoecologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He's been handling the cores as they are extruded into the plastic holders, wrapping them in saran wrap and labeling them for analysis. The mud changes as they get deeper. With the field work done, the team shipped 44 tubes of mud to the National Facility for Handling and Storing Lake Sediment Cores at the University of Minnesota to begin to piece together the story of the mammoths of St. Paul Island. After shipping the gear, there was time for team member Matt Willer's field work tradition, a game of croquet, this time on an icy beach in the middle of the Bering Sea. Major infringement. 